Hey everybody, welcome to a great video because today we are debunking some myths. You see, I see a lot of comments that are like, back in my day, things were better. The old things are always better. I had to walk 10 miles uphill both ways through the snow to get to school, that kind of attitude. And a lot of people think that old school traditional four wheel drives are so much better than the modern day computerized stuff. Well, I may prove you wrong in this video. So we're gonna run a TFL slip test. We're gonna test the all wheel drive systems of a 1961 Jeep and a brand new compass and then we're going to take them off road and see how they compare. All right. Welcome to the 1960s. This is a 1961 Jeep CJ5, and it's about as old school of a four wheel drive as you can possibly find. And in this video, I'm gonna hopefully demonstrate some of the advantages of modern technology, and also talk about some of the pros and cons of older technology. So, we're gonna start with the TFL slip test. Now this is a test we run all modern day crossovers and SUVs through to test their all wheel drive system, to see how they perform in a multitude of situations, and to see how they would work in snow and off road in a controlled environment first. Now this first test is gonna be a two wheel slip test. So, both rear wheels on this Jeep, are gonna be stuck in the rollers. Now, imagine that it's December 1961. You and your family are driving around through Colorado and it starts to snow. Well, in a modern day crossover, it would engage all wheel drive automatically, no levers or buttons to push, and you would have the confidence of all wheel drive. Not so much back in the early 60s. Let me show you what you have to do. So, all of a sudden we're driving through some deep snow, only rear wheel drive. We try to accelerate up a hill, this is what happens. The rear wheels are stuck, foot off the clutch, they're spinning, I'm revving it up, and we're not going anywhere. Well, to engage four-wheel drive on an old Jeep like this, you got to go through some rigmarole. So the first thing I have to do is look at my multitude of sticks. We actually have four sticks down here to engage. So this is your transmission, a three-speed manual. This lever engages the front axle, this lever engages high and low range, and this lever engages your power takeoff. So, to engage four-wheel drive, the first thing I have to do is push this lever back. I should say pull the lever back, and sometimes it fights you a little bit. Let's try slipping the wheels a little bit. Come on. Come on. You have been freshly greased. Why aren't you engaging? There we go. All right, got her in the right position. So now, four wheel drive is engaged and we can get unstuck, right? Not quite, because the next thing we have to do is actually go outside, imagine it's snowing in the 60s, you've got your trunk full of Bakelite toys and your kids bouncing around the back, it's negative 30 degrees Fahrenheit, they actually have to go outside and lock the hubs. Give me one sec. Well, now that my wife and kids are thoroughly cold and my hands are frozen, because of course you'd have to scrape them off, let's see if we can get unstuck. So, with the hubs locked, essentially what that does is it engages the wheels and the drive shaft together. It doesn't lock the front diff. That's a super common misconception. But now, let's see. Front axle is engaged, and we pulled ourselves off. Right as I stopped it. But, you can see, it's, uh, it's a lot more complicated than a modern day all-wheel drive system. Okay, well, in contrast, welcome to the Jeep Compass. This is one of the more affordable, smaller Jeeps in the lineup. This is a Trailhawk model, so it is the off-road version, but this is a vehicle that, let's face it, is gonna be used 99% on the road, maybe one or 2% off-road for most folks. But even still, I think we're gonna see a big difference in capability here on the TFL slip test in a controlled environment. So first up, we're gonna do the same thing we did in the Jeep, rear wheel slip test. Rear wheels are stuck in the roller, they're not gonna to touch anything, not pushing any buttons or switches or levers, nothing. Let's see if we can get unstuck where we had to go outside and do the hubs on the Jeep and pull the levers. All right, into drive, off the brake, onto the accelerator, and we drove right off, right? Pretty dramatic difference. But 
for those of you Jeep folks out there, you're probably thinking, yeah, but the compass is um, a front wheel drive oriented all wheel drive system. Well, let's do the same test. We'll put those two from the back wheels and the front wheels. See if there's a difference. All right. Once again, I'm gonna leave all the switches in automatic, not touching any buttons, but say we're driving the compass now during a snowstorm in 2023. Starts to get a little slippery. What happens if I uh, approach like a hill I have to get up? Front wheels are out of traction. Will the rear end engage onto the accelerator? Immediately. And if I wanted that engagement even quicker, there's a four wheel drive lock button here, which in theory, sends wheel speed front and rear more evenly. I can push that and the results I think are gonna be pretty much the same. Yeah, so my point I'm getting at here guys is as car people, we know to engage four wheel drive under slippery situations, snow, ice, off-road. A lot of non-car people don't. And to give an example, my mom was driving at the time a new third gen 4Runner over a mountain pass in the very early 2000s. There was a baby in the back seat and she almost crashed off a mountain because she forgot to put it in four-wheel drive and guess what that was the last we saw that forerunner she immediately sold it because she just didn't feel safe and it was her fault but she she didn't realize she had to put it in four-wheel drive or something happened where there was a disconnect on these modern crossovers even if you leave them in automatic mode the computers are going to split the power front and back as it sees fit and you're not going to end up in a really dangerous fishtail situation like she did that's a really big deal Now for the diagonal slip test. So the left front and the right rear wheels stuck in the rollers, the opposite ends of the car, the right front and the left rear are going to have to start spinning if we're gonna get unstuck. This is super common in snow. Imagine you're going up a steep icy driveway, start maybe picking up wheels a little bit. Those wheels are gonna start spinning. Very common off road when you're going through holes or through like a trench course. No spoilers yet, um, <laughs> but uh, I think what a lot of people don't understand about the 60s and the 70s and, you know, most decades pre-2000 is that vehicles in the four-wheel drive class usually didn't have traction control and from the factory most didn't have locking diffs. Some did, but the vast majority had open diffs in the front, open diffs in the rear, which allow variable wheel speed front and rear. Now, the front end those locking hubs are engaged. And I see this comment so much. People are like, well, that means you have a front locker. It does not. To oversimplify things, all those locking hubs do is connect the spinning wheel with the spinning shaft, okay? You're not doing anything to the differential. It's still an open diff. And the result, well, I think your find is going to be pretty predictable. So I'm in four wheel drive high, backing onto the rollers, making sure we're nice and settled here. Yep, looking good. Four wheel drive high, into first gear, off of the clutch, wheels are spinning. We're not going anywhere. Well, you're probably thinking, sticker in low range. Okay, I can do so. Push this lever forward. Once again, not as easy as it looks. There we go, there's low range, engaged. We're spinning, we're spinning, the vehicle's rocking. Once again, we're stuck because this vehicle's open disc front and rear. Now to combat this, some old vehicles have a limited slip rear differential. Um, maybe like an auto locker, like a G80, depending on the decade. But uh, in a vehicle like the CJ5, we're stuck. Now there are a couple things we can do to kind of fake a locker, or maybe I should say fake traction control. I'm gonna actually ride the brake. You can also do this with the parking brake. Um, unfortunately, my parking brake doesn't work super well. So I'm gonna ride the foot brake as I accelerate and try to equalize the wheel speed a little bit left and right. And I'm thinking that's gonna get us unstuck. So first gear, okay. Off the clutch, onto the brake. Let me try rocking it a little bit. This doesn't work as well as the comments will have you think. But with enough, with enough wheel speed. Wow. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Do that 
that enough times and eventually you're gonna get unstuck. But um, that took a long time. That was a lot of work. And I think we'll see when we go to the new car, uh, the difference in, in how simply these modern computers will tackle a situation like that. In this new test, we're gonna use the power of traction control. Now, traction control is one of these things which gets such a bad rap in the car community because people look at traction control in the viewfinder of track driving, right? Uh, where you're like, on the limit, and then all of a sudden, big, big brother says no, shuts down all the fun. But traction control in a vehicle like this Compass, which is a vehicle with primarily open diffs, can have an enormous impact on the off-road capability because the computer has wheel speed sensors and can manually brake wheels individually to send wheel speed to the other end of the car, which in this case has traction. Uh, Jeep calls this BLD, brake lock differential. Now Land Rover was an early pioneer of this in like the late 90s with the Discovery 2. Uh, Mercedes, believe it or not, was early on with this as well in the uh, Mercedes ML, and now of course every manufacturer uses it, but it's such a game changer, and I'll show you what I mean. Diagonal slip test, normal mode no buttons pushed we're just in drive like you know your mom might drive on a daily basis onto the accelerator wheels start to spin traction control engages breaks the wheels that are spinning forces wheel speed to the wheels on the ground and we pull ourselves off now that did still take a little bit of work but compare that to the old jeep where i was on the brake off the brake on the brake off the brake on the brake off the brake rocking it back and forth modulating the clutch and this it's all automatic and watch. Let me go into the rock mode, one of the more aggressive modes. Um, watch what happens now. I think we're gonna find a pretty substantial difference with the traction control engagement. Off the brake, nice and settled, onto the accelerator. So you actually hear it. You hear the computer going tick, 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 tick as it starts to send brake pressure to the, uh, the wheels that are spinning and, you know, pull us right off. All right, let's go on to a three-wheeled slip test. Three-wheeled slip test, both left wheels are stuck, the right rear is stuck, only the right front is on the ground with traction. Um, now usually I'd say, let's see if the brakes can engage on the traction control to send wheel speed to that one wheel. But we don't have traction control, and we don't have lockers. Okay, come on, Jeep. Let's see what you got, buddy. Into first gear, got low range engaged. And the issue with open diffs is that the wheel speed is going to take the path of least resistance, which is the wheel on the roller. I'm modulating the brake, I'm pulsing it. Oh, there's just nothing going on. Yeah, we are beyond stuck. Mr. Cole, I might need a little push from you, my friend. And that's the thing about old school four wheel drives with open diffs is people put them on a pedestal and they think that they can do things that oftentimes, at least in a controlled environment, they just can't because they're just limited. They're open diffs, front and rear. Okay, I'll just cheat to just drive off the side of it. There we go. All right. Well, I hope you have a good understanding now of some of the limitations of uh, open differentials on an old even, you know, vehicle which is considered to be one of the, the most capable of its era. Let's see how that compares to a modern day crossover. Three wheel slip test. Right front wheels on the ground, starting off in auto mode, just the normal driving around mode. Backing onto the rollers in this Jeep Compass into neutral, into drive. Let's see if we can get unstuck without pushing any buttons. You can actually feel and hear the traction control engaging. Uh, no, we're not getting unstuck. There's not enough wheel speed being transferred. But let me once again try putting it into an off-road mode. Let me put it into the rock setting. There we go. Rock is engaged just like that. See if that makes a difference. Put the computers into a different mode. Come on, Jeep. <laughs> so actually, we got enough wheel speed transfer there where it squeaked the wheel on the ground and pulled us off. So there you have it. That's uh, immediately a lot better than what that old CJ5 could do.
All right. So it's time to take these two Jeeps off road to see if all my blathering and controlled testing is actually any truth to it. So we're out here at the Onyx Off Road Andre's Pit Course. Check out Onyx Off Road for the best off road navigation software anywhere. It uh, allows you to download maps so when you're offline, you know exactly where you're going and it integrates in Apple CarPlay. Okay, maybe not in the CJ5, but in a more modern vehicle it would. Now we're going to run these vehicles through trenches, which are these offset grooves cut into the earth at varying um, increments designed to get vehicles off kilter, designed to lift up tires. Now one important thing which we haven't talked about is suspension. Because I talked about on the rollers how you know, well what if you pick up a wheel on, uh, you know, and it's in the air and it doesn't have any traction. Well, what if you can do, do an obstacle without picking up a wheel at all? And that's where the CJ5 has an advantage. It has solid axles in the front and the back. Solid axles are kind of like a teeter-totter. One wheel moves up, the other one moves down, and they work great at ensuring wheels stay in contact with the ground up to a point. Now this CJ has leaf springs, not a lot of articulation. So this one is probably not gonna do as good of a job as, the, uh, uh, as a modern Jeep at doing that, but let's see what happens. Now, as always, we don't take this test with speed. We take it nice and slow on purpose, because this is not a test to see if I can hold on to the steering wheel for long enough without getting really uncomfortable. This is a test of the four-wheel drive system. And you see that, that was the articulation coming into play. So on the compass, I bet we're gonna pick up wheels, but because we have those axles to pivot, the traction aid problem really wasn't even a concern because the wheel never really left the ground. Onto the next obstacle though, onto the next trench. And it's about to start getting steeper. It's about to start getting more challenging. Okay, there you go. Well, now we have a problem. So, we've run out of articulation. Now we're picking up that left front wheel and the right rear wheel. And I'm gonna have to use some speed to power through it, to motor through it. And now I'm completely off kilter. Mmm. Okay, now if I had a locker, I'd flick it on. Of course, this doesn't have a locker from the factory, so I can't click it on. I'm trying my brake trick, and maybe just a little bit of speed. Okay, there we go. Okay, once again, complete loss of traction there. And there's no traction aid to help me out. Okay, now there's some speed, some brake, giving it some brake, giving it some speed. All right, well, we motored up it, but it was not graceful. And if it had been any deeper holes or any steeper, we would have been stuck. Let's see how that street going, let's be honest, it is a street going crossover compares. All right, welcome to the Jeep Compass. Same test through Andre's pit running the trenches course. One thing which I think is really funny is that this new Jeep has a two liter four cylinder. That old Jeep has a 134 cubic inch F head, which is like, what, 2.2 liters, 2.4 liters, something like that. Um, so bigger engine than the old Jeep. That thing made 72 horsepower. This thing makes 200. <laughs> A smaller displacement with a turbocharger, of course. It has a three speed, um, and this has, what, three times the number of gears, something like that, in this compass. So, running trenches, same exact course, same day, same conditions. I'm gonna start out in auto mode. Not pushing any buttons, not engaging any settings, no knobs being twist. I'm just gonna try it in good old fashioned automatic, and let's see what happens. So, now this first hole, the Jeep was actually able to maintain traction with the ground, uh, with those solid axles, but with the independent suspension on the compass, we've lost traction with the ground altogether, and now we have to rely on the electronic features to get us unstuck. There you go, all right. So you can see how that worked, but that, that first obstacle was harder in this new compass than the old CJ, but the second obstacle, well, we lost traction in both vehicles, uh, where we picked up corners in both vehicles, and you can see that the, the uh, traction control engaged in the new Jeep Compass. It's once again, still in auto mode. Turbo spooling up there, delivering the torque that I needed to. Definitely very tippy. I'd say a little more tippy than the old one. Park Sense is not enjoying this because the sensors are dusty. Come on, Jeep. Come on, you can hear the you can hear the traction control thinking about what to do. And last little bit. Okay, so we made it up. 
I'd say we made it up easier than the CJ5. Certainly I was sweating less. It was also a lot more comfortable. Um, and we took it with less speed. And that's the key. Modern day computers allow you to be more elegant with how you go off road. They allow you to be more sophisticated and precise in your movements. Whereas an old vehicle with open diffs, you basically have one option in a situation like that. Drop the gear and disappear. You know, mash the throttle, just work that thing, try new lines. In this vehicle, you know, I can work with the traction control. I can work with the traction management systems to kind of be a little bit more precise, a little bit more elegant. But let's try that same obstacle once again in rock mode. So in rock mode, it's gonna engage the four wheel drive lock, which is gonna essentially try to lock the front of your drive shaft, well, drive shaft, the power takeoff unit in the front, but tries to lock the front of your wheels at similar speeds. And then I'm gonna go and engage four wheel drive low. This drives me crazy on these cars. It's not a true four wheel drive low. That old school CJ, you've got a lever you pull and it engages uh, in the transfer case, a lower gear set, which allows you to, to multiply the torque through all three speeds. In this compass, four wheel drive low essentially just locks you in first gear in high range, which is not, not very, uh, useful in my opinion. I can just do that manually with the shifter here. I don't need to push a button, but I've engaged the rock mode, the rock programming, the most aggressive off-road mode. Let's see if the torque transfer and the power delivery is different now. So first obstacle, picking up that wheel. You can actually hear a difference as well as see a difference. It is much more aggressive at braking spinning wheels. Okay, next obstacle. Once again, look at that, look at that. Picking up wheels high into the air. Traction control system is working though. We're working that system. We're uh, we're using the capability. We're just finessing our way up this hill now. Staying deep in the trenches. It's getting steep here. Spooling up that turbocharged engine. And there you have it. All right. So in the off-road mode there, it made it a lot easier to complete that obstacle. We did it in the auto setting, but it was a lot easier than this. But I don't want it to seem that I'm saying, well, a compass is better off-road than an old CJ. Done. Because there are so many factors that go into off-road. It's not only traction aids, it's um, approach angle. You can't even get to an obstacle in some cases if your front end's too low. It's departure angle, it's breakover angle. And that's where the CJ excels in compared to the compass. And I'll show you an example up here. Let's go up Lava Lane, which is our test of approach and departure angle. Let's try it in the compass and see what the angles are like. I bet, I bet we're gonna scrape. So we're diving into this um, aggressive pit here. Taking it super slow. Let me hop out. Let's see how much clearance we actually have. Well, you can see on this trail hop, we're doing pretty well. Let me get a little closer. Let's see how that's looking. All right, we're probably three inches to the tow hook, so we're gonna see if we can power up this pack. We have to watch the butt, too. That's an important thing that everyone forgets. Ah, you see we're just about to touch the rear end there. So um, if this was just a little steeper, we'd be completely out of departure angle and uh, we would be doing some damage. But let's see if I can power up this steep upward slope now. All right, Jeep, let's see what you got. I'm in four wheel drive low. Pointing it up toward the sky. Flipping some wheels. building some heat in that all-wheel drive system by doing that stuff, but you know, we made it up. Let's see how the CJ compares in that same test. I do absolutely adore this whole Jeep. It's loud and old and squeaky, but it's been here for over 60 years on this planet, and it still is running well and eager to take on new challenges. And the big question, of course, is, is that compass gonna be around in 60 years? With all those modules and electronics? Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. I certainly have my opinions. All right, coming down this hill here in the CJ5. 
same line through Lava Lane here. You can see the tire treads of the uh, compass. Okay, so remember, we, we came pretty close to bottoming out the front end in that Jeep. Let's see how it looks in this one. So in this new Jeep, oh, new Jeep, in this ancient Jeep, I mean, look at that. We got a full foot to the front bumper, and this is with stock suspension. And another thing, too, is that compass utilizes underbody protection, which is great. But it still has that radiator, which hangs pretty low. The radiator in the CJ, it starts there. It's well above the frame rail, so you would scrape the leafs and the axle and the front bumper and the frame before you would take out a radiator. Let's see how the departure angle looks. we go. Okay. Well, the license plate's a little close, and this one does have the hitch, which is also coming a little close, but once again, I mean, angles on this Jeep are just better, and that's before we talk about breakover. This super short wheelbase means that big humps in the middle of your path, no problem. Let's see if we can climb the hill. The other thing which is great about this Jeep, is it has a real genuine low range. And when it's in low range, you know, engage first gear, let off that clutch and it just crawls. You know, and we're facing up this same hill, which is probably 25, 30 degrees steep, if I had to take a guess. I have all these inclinometers, none of them really work on this Jeep. Okay, so first gear, I'm just letting it crawl. Listen to the sound that the engine makes. <laughs> a little bouncy there, but listen to how much less strained the old Jeep is compared to the new one. And that's because of the gearing. This has 72 horsepower, and you can see with my foot off of the clutch, off of the accelerator, it puts along. Not on a torque converter, it's not an automatic, but because of the gearing. I mean, it's to the point where I could hop out and walk alongside it if I needed to drop off some hay or pick something up. And that is a huge advantage of the low range, is bringing that finesse, bringing that torque multiplication into the equation makes this very capable and makes this vehicle a vehicle I'd want to take deep into Moab, even if it was bouncy and uncomfortable and with a lot of wheel spinning, but I'd feel much more comfortable in this than that old, uh, or than the new Compass. Am I claiming that a modern day Jeep Compass is better off-road than an old school CJ5? And no. And I don't want to see those comments, oh this kid's an idiot, he doesn't know what he's talking about, because I know that the CJ5 has a better approach angle, departure angle, breakover angle, it's got solid axles, you can take stuff at speed without really worrying about tearing plastic off the underside or whatever. This thing is a little beast, but for most folks experiencing light off-roading in snowy conditions, the computerized all-wheel drive system on a Compass is just better. It just makes more sense and it's far more sophisticated, at least stock to stock. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. This has been Tommy behind the camera, Camera Ninja Cole. We'll see you on the next video.